Godzilla X Kong, Godzilla A and Kong, Godzilla Cross Kong, The New Empire, whichever way you prefer to say it, the sequel to Godzilla vs. Kong has finally come out. And off top, pretty fun film. Now, we got spoiled this last year with Godzilla Minus One. Uh, I'll be doing a review for that a little bit later. And then we also got Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire. This movie, like I said, very fun. What they did to start off with this movie is very different from Godzilla vs. Kong. Kong is like your main character in this movie, which I thought was really cool. I liked watching Kong in the the uh, the different world. I can never remember what they call it. But he's running around trying to make himself king of the world that's beneath. Because Godzilla, we all know, is king of the monsters up top. And they can't have two alphas in the same place. And Godzilla would want to fight and kill Kong every moment he's up top on Earth movie starts off Kong's running around gets in a really cool fight scene with like these wolf looking things that are down here and the way Kong <laughs> gets out of the situation is really cool he rips one in half just breaks it in half dumps the blood all over him and what they did with this movie even more so than what they did in Godzilla versus Kong they bring personality to the kaijus the titans Kong has his own type of character uh, personality. Godzilla has his own. Scar King, who shows up later in the movie, has his own. And <laughs> I'll say this. They gave more personality to the Titans than the humans in this movie. Once again, the human characters in this movie are completely worthless. So boring. It's not like Godzilla Minus One where you actually care about the humans. There's stories being developed. Nothing like that in here. In this movie... We have a like potential love interest between a doctor who is who adopted the girl from Godzilla vs. Kong that can communicate with Kong, and this guy who I, I can't remember his name, but he's basically like Radio Shack version of Star Lord. Found him very annoying. Every time he shows up to the scene, he has to play music. Just a little annoying. We'll say when the movie starts getting into the fight scenes between all the main titans, it gets very fun. The fights are awesome. We'll say Scar King takes out. It's a little bit of a buildup, so you're kind of just like waiting, like, all right, what's going on? And then it seems like the whole um, tension building and the whole plot of the movie takes a while to get going, but once it does, it's pretty fun. She moves in this movie, the trailers, yet again, ruined everything for everybody. So I didn't watch any of the trailers because I knew. Legendary or whoever produced this video, ever since the Godzilla movie in 2014, their trailers have shown way too much. So I refuse to watch them. I'll watch a teaser and that's it. The plot in this movie, uh, Godzilla has to go eventually help Kong to fight Scar King because Scar King does control Shimu. The way Scar King controls Shimu is a little weird. Don't really know where he got the crystal from Shimu. I don't really ripped it off her back or whatever. Shimu is a little underutilized in this film. Shimu's powers really aren't explained. Shimu is apparently the creator of the Titans in the, this universe. And Scar King's able to control Shimu with just a crystal, like I said earlier. And overall, you see some of Shimu's powers. Uh, like the ice breath can freeze pretty much everything instantly. But overall, felt a little weak in also like in the scene where shimu finally freezes scar king before kong finishes the fight you could tell shimu really didn't want to do it i just felt like the shimu the titan was just a little underdeveloped and not used to full potential maybe we'll see something going forward i don't know godzilla in this movie my favorite lizard godzilla just out to just fight and throw fists with everybody i loved it at the beginning of the film zilla kills Scylla. And uh, that was cool. Scylla, again, didn't learn after watching Godzilla. Uses atomic breath multiple times. Tries wrapping up Godzilla's face. Godzilla shoots his atomic breath right down Scylla's face. Gets rid of him. Tiamat is in this film. Poor Tiamat was just trying to defend their, their home. Zilla needs to go in there to power up. But it's hinted in here. Zilla's really powering up with all this radiation. We don't think for Shimu, but potentially something else coming down later in the film. One aspect of the film I think is kind of a plot hole. So if you remember going back to uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, there was the one girl whose family lineage was connected to Mothra. They show in the film that she has a uh, connection to Mothra in the film. However, the girl that was in Godzilla vs. Kong 
is apparently part of the Iwi tribe, and the Iwi tribe in this movie, for when they're in the um, the Hollow Earth, they are the ones that have contacts with Mothra. And now in this film, she is supposedly the one that can, can help uh, have a connection with Mothra. Thought that was cool bringing Mothra back. Mothra gets a great amount of screen time in here. Mothra does awesome, but I'm just confused. Where were they going with that storyline in Godzilla versus or Godzilla King of the Monsters? Are they going to go back to that, or is that something they just cut out? So I was a little confused with that. Other than that, the little girl does really good. Mothra comes in and saves the day when Godzilla and Kong do get in a fight when Kong is trying to get Godzilla to come down to Hollow Earth and fight Scar King. Does a great job. Does a fantastic job of showing the relationship between Godzilla and Mothra and the respect they have for one another. And then the big climactic fight scene in the Hollow Earth leading back up to Earth was really good. Overall, the movie, very fun. As stated, the Titans are awesome when they're on screen. You just want to see the Titans. Human characters, they could probably have saved 20, 30 minutes of this movie without some of this stuff. They're just, the human characters are so worthless in these movies. They're so boring. You don't have a connection to any of them. Other than that, though, the movie was very fun. I'll give this a solid, I'll give it a solid 7. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to see where they go from here. I'm hoping they're going to lead up to Destroyer coming in the film. If they wanted to go ahead and somehow kill Godzilla in one of these movies, Destroyer would be the perfect way get all the titans together to help fight Destroya because Godzilla's not going to be able to fight Destroya itself. And I'm also wondering though, there is a big emphasis on crystals in this movie. These crystals look very similar to the crystals you would see something like Space Godzilla having. So I'm wondering if there's potential for Space Godzilla to come in. We'll see. If you enjoy the previous movies, you'll probably enjoy this one. If you're looking for like a story-driven narrative, something as good as Godzilla Minus One, this is not that movie. Go ahead and watch Minus One. I will be doing a review for Minus One here in a little bit, especially with some of the news that just dropped about future installments. That should be pretty cool. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Coda's Cove. Hey, if you like the content, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Hey, be a friend. Tell Come on down to the cove because the water is fine. Thanks.